Japanese scientist Makoto Kuro'o and his lab were researching how to extend the lifespan of animals when they discovered a new protein that they called clotho, and it would change everything that we knew about aging. Humans with high levels of clotho lived longer, healthier lives, scored higher on IQ tests, and had less dementia in old age. Clotho takes its name from one of the Greek fates, a goddess who held the threads of life that determined how long each person would live. Clotho levels vary from person to person, but most peoples are far below the optimum. New gene therapies allow us to modify our own cells to produce more of this protein, which gives anybody the benefits of 20 to 30% increased lifespan, better memory, less risk for dementia, and more strength in old age, and less risk of cancer. In this episode, we're gonna go over how clotho protein works, how to measure these increased lifespans, and some of the gene therapies that help us get those results. All with references, of course. Clotho is a protein that's made in the kidneys, livers, and brains of most animals, including humans. It originally evolved to help animals use calcium to build strong limbs and bodies, and clotho is still used to make strong bones, muscles, brains, and other tissues. It's also involved in body systems that regulate inflammation, blood sugar levels, and removing damaged cells. Actually, there are three forms of clotho, alpha, beta, and gamma, but alpha clotho is the most important, and that's what we're gonna be talking about. Alpha clotho works by binding together with another protein called IFGF23, which is present in our blood and in most of our body's tissues. In the brain, clotho helps to grow gray matter while also developing strong neural connections that help prevent dementia and mental decline. It's so effective at preventing dementia that it actually works against other risk factors in developing Alzheimer's. What does it actually mean to measure increased lifespan? How can we be sure that something is really making people live longer? It seems simple, just wait till something dies, right? Not really, we need a lot more data to get an average and even more to know if a specific therapy even works. We also need to differentiate here between maximal lifespan and average lifespan. Maximal lifespan just means the oldest age that humans can live to. That's about 120 years old. It doesn't really matter how healthy you are, by the time you hit 120, there are so many problems in your brain, especially with memory and reasoning, that there's no real point in extending our bodies past that. Until we can fix these neurological problems, it's not gonna make much sense to increase our maximal lifespan. But if humans can live to 120, then how come most people die closer to 80? Well, the older that we get, the more likely we are to develop serious health problems like cancer, heart disease, or Alzheimer's. If we were able to eliminate these diseases, then most people would live past 100 and also have a much healthier time doing it. This wouldn't change our maximum lifespan, but a lot more of us would be reaching these very old ages in good shape. Look at this graph that shows what percentage of the population reaches different ages over the last 150 years. As healthcare has improved, more and more people are reaching very old age. And as medicine and longevity therapies improve, we can expect this graph to become even further skewed to the right. What we want is for everybody to have a long, healthy life, called a health span, and to delay the problems of old age as long as possible. So now that we know what we're trying to measure, how do we know that Clotho does this? Clotho is usually produced in high amounts by young people and as they get older, they produce less and less. By the time most people reach age 50, they don't produce very much clotho at all. But this is just an average. There are plenty of young people with very low clotho levels and plenty of old people that still make some. You can see here in this graph how widely clotho levels vary and how it drops with age. The variation is caused mainly by genetics, although environmental factors can also play a role. For example, there's a gene for clotho called KLVS, which gives somebody very high levels. Because of this variation in humans, we have this natural experiment that allows us to see how differences in lifespan and cognitive ability are affected by the presence or absence of clotho. Over and over again, studies find that people with high clotho levels have longer lifespans, 
better cognition, and better overall health. Clotho seems to improve the health the more of it you have, with no problem being reported of having too much Clotho. It seems to self-regulate that way. Even small differences in these Clotho levels can have significant effects on lifespan. Here's a graph that shows the different survival rates of people with high, medium, and low levels of Clotho. You can see that people from the high Clotho group lived longer than the other groups, and this effect becomes more noticeable as time goes on. The data suggests that more Clotho is always better for health, but even going strictly by available studies, we can see that at least 75% of people have suboptimal levels of Clotho. And people with very low levels of Clotho, about 25% of the population, had significantly worse survival rates and many more health problems and dementia. So not only will high Clotho levels help you live a longer life, but low levels will dramatically diminish your lifespan. And it's not just your physical body that's affected. Clotho levels also affect the mind. Several studies have shown a strong association between high Clotho levels and cognitive ability, especially in old age. It seems to help prevent dementia and Alzheimer's by generally improving brain function. Studies have shown that people with high Clotho levels have fewer strokes and are much less likely to develop Alzheimer's and dementia. In a paper from 2019, people with high Clotho levels had significantly more brain mass in the areas associated with focus, planning, and working memory, the RDL-PFC. And they also had more neural connections in the area of the brain associated with memory retrieval, thinking ahead, and taking the perspectives of others, the RTEMP. In fact, another paper found that Clotho accounted for about 3% of the average variation in intelligence between people, which translates to a difference of about six IQ points between people with high and low levels of Clotho. This is supported by studies where mice were given Clotho directly and had a significant cognitive boost. Some of you might be thinking, what about correlation and causation? How do we know that it's the Clotho making people live longer and be smarter? What if it's actually something else making the people healthy, which just also happens to raise their Clotho levels? If we just increase Clotho and nothing else, would that also give us the cognitive and longevity benefits? I see you, I get it. And the answer is yes. So let's look at some studies where they only increase Clotho levels, either with a gene therapy or by injecting the Clotho protein directly. The first paper that established Clotho as being directly responsible for longevity came out in 2005, when researchers made a breed of mouse that overexpressed Clotho. That means that every cell in the mouse was producing Clotho. So the mouse had way higher levels of Clotho than it ever would naturally, and no other changes. It was a normal, happy mouse otherwise. But even with just that one change, these super Clotho mice lived 20 to 30% longer than the normal ones. Further studies revealed that Clotho gene therapies were helping the animals become healthier in many ways, especially by helping them keep their muscle mass and cognitive abilities when they grew old. These cognitive effects are so pronounced, they even occurred almost instantly when pure Clotho was injected into an animal. In 2017 paper, young mice injected with Clotho protein had an immediate increase in intelligence and health. These effects from injecting just the Clotho protein were short-lived, since they didn't use gene therapy to continuously produce it inside the body, but it shows how effective this single protein is. Most of the research on Clotho therapies has been done in mice, and that's because it's difficult and touchy to study human subjects in published literature. But we can see from the natural variation in human Clotho levels that the same relationship that we see in mice is there. And what we've learned from more than 20 years of research is that the effects on health and Clotho are identical. And despite the lack of formal studies for genetic therapies, we can still draw on personal experiences to get an idea of the effects of Clotho gene therapy on humans. I've given myself a version of the Clotho gene therapy, and I know others who have too. Many people said they noticed a difference in energy levels and scoring better on cognitive tests. For myself, I noticed less brain fog and some improvements at the gym. Others have also reported feeling energized and scoring higher on those cognitive tests. The established effects of amplifying Clotho levels are a 20 to 30% increase in average lifespan, retaining muscle mass in old age, which helps prevent injury, preventing neurological disorders like Alzheimer's and dementia, and increasing general cognitive ability.
Well, the design for the plasmid that we need for clothotherapy is pretty straightforward. Although there are some details in there to think about. First, like any gene therapy, we need to start with the backbone to the plasmid DNA. So this is the backbone I want to use. The space here is where we can add new genes. Now let's add in the gene for clotho. Because of the way clotho is made in the body, there's actually a few variations we could use. These are variations like secreted clotho or membrane bound. The differences between these are a little bit technical, but if you want to know more about the science here, please check the description for a link to all of our sources. Based on a few studies though, I think that secreted clotho is probably the best. So let's put that one in there. Great, so we got our clotho gene and we put it in the plasmid. Now, before we put it in there, we have to add in something important, the promoter. If you remember from last episode, a promoter is a piece of DNA that tells cells when to make a protein and how much to make. Let's use a popular one called a CBA promoter. The CBA promoter basically tells any cell to make a lot of this protein all the time. This means that whatever cell gets the plasmid is gonna receive instructions to make a lot of clotho. This is a good fit for this therapy because we'll probably just want to inject it intramuscularly so that it ends up mostly in muscle cells. Those muscle cells will then start making a bunch of clotho protein which gets swept up by the bloodstream and distributed throughout the body. Basically, we're turning a few cubic centimeters of muscle cells into a tiny clotho gland. So let's make sure our clotho gene has the right promoter on it. Now let's add a few details to the plasmid just to make it work better and we're done. Here's a full diagram for that gene that would make clotho, and you can find a link to the DNA file in the description. However, if you actually wanted this gene therapy to work and avoid an allergic reaction because you didn't mix your ingredients together correctly, then you're gonna have to do a bit more than just cut and paste here. This isn't gonna work out of the box. Do not try this at home. I can't go into detail about the steps here because people are kind of weird, but it's a good start and I encourage you to learn more about this if you're interested. The version of clotho I use is different than the one I'm showing here, because like I said, I had to leave a few pieces out, but you can see that my version worked here. We tested my clotho levels before and after the gene therapy, and you can see that the levels were much higher following the treatment. The more we work with this therapy, the more effective it becomes. Clotho is one of the most important undeveloped medicines and an excellent candidate for gene therapy. Despite this, very few people have even heard about the clotho, let alone its potential to revolutionize healthcare. There are huge opportunities here for people and healthcare, and hopefully this video is gonna help bridge the gap between this potential and action. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. There's a lot of info to cover here, so if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. I've also left a big list of reference materials in the description, so you can dig into any part of this episode that caught your interest. I'll see you guys next time on Gene Hub.